Hi, my name is Sylvie. I am a certified health coach and fitness trainer. And today's video is about resistant starch and the keto diet. It's actually a revised version of the video I published last Wednesday. When I research the information to create my videos and my blog posts, I just do my best to summarize, but I don't know everything and sometimes I misunderstand things or I don't realize that I'm missing some information. And that's what happened with the video I published last week on the keto diet and resistant starch. And Rhonda Whitmer commented on my video and she offered many clarifications. She corrected several mistakes I had made. So I just decided to revise my blog post using the information and that she provided and also researching further and then I I couldn't even use my previous video so I just decided to recreate a new one and also if you want to learn more about resistant starch check out the site resistantstarchresearch.com it's filled with all you ever want to know about res resistant starch so it's definitely worth checking out so I'm going to give you some sources of resistant starch you can try on the keto diet. But before we do that, I just want to explain what is resistant starch. Simply put, resistant starch is a type of starch that your body cannot digest. So it goes through your intestines and arrives to your colon, the longest part of your large intestine intact. There it ferments and it serves as food for your good gut bacteria. And the process of fermentation produces something called butyrate or butyric acid. In, in my blog post, I explain a bit further what starches are. So you can definitely go and check that out. But here I really want to just get to uh, the resistant starch sources quickly. I don't want to make this video draw on and on and on. So just check the link in the description if you want to learn more about starches, their composition, how they are digested, and also if you want to learn more about the benefits of butyrate. But another thing I want to touch on before I give you my resistant starch sources is the difference between fiber and resistant starch. Resistant starches are actually a type of insoluble fiber. And I read a source, and again, you can find the link in the description, that explained that the distinction insoluble and soluble fiber is not really the best. And fiber should actually be classified into three types. Bulking fibers, which hold a lot of water and serve as roughage and help keep you regular. There's also viscous fibers, which reduce the absorption of cholesterol and sugars by thickening the content in your intestinal tracts. And lastly, there's fermentable fiber. So fermentable fibers ferment in your gut and help feed your good bacteria and resistant starch is a type of fermentable fiber. Okay, so now let's talk about how to consume resistant starch uh, when you're on the keto diet. There are four types of resistant starch. There's grains, seeds, and legumes, which would be classified as resistant starch one or RS1. You find that a lot. You find these classifications a lot if you look online. There's raw and unripe bananas or plantains these are classified as RS2. There's cooked and cooled potatoes and white rice. These are classified as RS3. And then lastly, there's man-made sources that are chemically modified and those are RS4. You're most likely wondering how you can include resistant starch into your diet since these sources are not keto approved for food sources. So I found that most people who are on the keto diet and decide to experiment with resistant starch use potato starch. And they start with one tablespoon a day, they measure their ketone and glucose levels and go from there. So you can see if it impacts your ketone levels 
and your glucose levels and see how you feel and maybe gradually increase that to two tablespoons a day or even three tablespoons a day. So for this reason, potato starch is the first uh, source of resistant starch that I am going to recommend. One tablespoon contains eight grams of resistant starch. Now, not all brands of potato starch are alike, and it's very important that, you, that the potatoes are dehydrated at very low temperature to conserve as much of the resistant starch as possible. Rhonda Whitmer suggested the MS Prebiotic brand. She said that it was the most reliable brand as far as how much resistant starch you are, go you are going to get. I looked up Bob's Red Mill as well. And um, after reading the comments, if you check again the link in the description, and if you read the description of the process and how their potato starch is made and and after reading the comments, the interactions there, I felt pretty confident that it would be a decent brand. But go ahead and do your own research and pick your own brand. Another source that you could try is a green banana or plantain. And before you stop watching the video thinking, oh, what, I, what, she's like, what is she talking about suggesting a banana on the keto diet? Just keep in mind that if you are consuming a green banana, out of those 23 grams of carbs that a banana typically provides, about eight grams of those will be resistant starch and will not affect your insulin level the same way. And again, it's a matter of seeing how your body reacts and also weighing the benefits of a deeper ketosis versus uh, getting more resistant starch in your diet. And if you do decide to try a green banana or plantain, you may find it tastes pretty gross. So there's a couple of options. You can mix it with a cup of milk and some cinnamon in the blender and even vanilla as well. I found this tip on Mark's Daily Apple. Or you can just slice your green banana and dehydrate it at very low temperature. That will also make it a lot more tasty. The third option I want to suggest is green banana flour. And again, it's super important that you make sure that you look for raw green banana flour because I want to emphasize that unless you're talking about the fourth category of modified starches, which is man-made, um, heat will destroy most of your resistant starches. And then what you can do is you add it to your smoothies, uh, your any beverage that you enjoy, and even just plain water. Green banana flour provides anywhere from 5.5 grams to 16.6 grams of resistant starch per 100 grams of flour. And you, since you find about eight grams of resistant starch uh, per banana, a banana weighs about 118 grams, it is pretty comparable. The last source of resistant starch that I want to touch on is the man-made sources. Some studies suggest that man-made sources have the greatest glucose lowering benefits. So even though it doesn't seem as attractive, I mean, most, I think most of us would tend to prefer whole food sources intuitively, but these man-made sources may actually have higher health benefits. Man-made sources are physically or chemically modified to change their structure. So they contain a higher amount of amylose, which is one of the components of resistant starch. Some examples include high maize resistant starch, modified potato starch, and modified tapioca starch. So that's about it uh, regarding the resistant starch sources. But before I leave you, let's just talk quickly about whether you should even bother supplementing with resistant starch when you're on a keto diet. So there are a couple reasons you might decide to experiment with resistant starch. Number one, if you've been subjected to multiple courses of antibiotics throughout your life. Number two, if you are not feeling as good as you think you should, it's always good to start experimenting with different things when you don't feel your best. And number three, if you're just curious and you love trying different things and you love experimenting with supplements. 
apart from the well-researched health benefit that you may experience from supplementing with resistant starch, again, there's lots of research that I posted on my blog post about all of that, you may also experience other side benefits that I found some anecdotal evidence for, like improved body composition, a feeling of calm, and better sleep. However, sometimes people notice uh, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, cramps, and these side effects may be due to the fact that you are uh, getting this resistant fiber into your intestinal tracts where they are going to ferment and it may take a little bit of time for your body to get used to it so it may subside keep that in mind so another thing to keep in mind before we talk about how much uh, resistant starch you should supplement with is there is most likely a synergy between resistant starch and other types of fiber in your body and so that's another reason why food sources <laughs> may be preferable that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try um, other man-made versions as i mentioned already they may even be more beneficial in some aspect but it's always good to remember that food in general it's not like one nutrient works apart from everything else and gives you all these benefits usually all the elements of food together, that's what gives you the greatest benefits. And another thing is that, as with most supplements, more is not always better. And there are some concerns over resistant starch. And so it may be a double-edged sword. Don't overdo it. Most studies that have been done on resistant starch uh, have been done using anywhere from 15 to 30 grams a day, which is about four times greater than what is provided through the uh, average American diet. So it looks like most people could definitely benefit from getting more resistant starch in their life. But again, it's a matter of doing your own research and experimenting with your own body. I hope I didn't make more mistakes in this video. I did try to be as accurate as possible, but it is a very in-depth topic that does go over my head a little bit. I did my best to summarize it, make it as clear and as reliable as possible. But as usual, I want to emphasize I'm a certified health coach. I'm not a nutritionist or a researcher or a specialist in on, on any given topic so I just try to relay what I learned to you to make it simple and doable and practical but never take anyone's word as gospel and certainly not mine I enjoy helping you reach your health goals I enjoy sharing the information I learn about but certainly I make mistakes sometimes I misunderstand things so I just do my best and I hope that's helpful. Thank you for watching.